Welcome to Sounding Board, a production of Seroptimus International of Novato, whose mission it is to improve the lives of women and girls through programs leading to social and economic empowerment. I'm Nicole Pantaleo, Deputy District Attorney here in the County of Marin, and I'm also a Seroptimus and member of the Seroptimus International of Marin County. Today, I'm very excited to have two guests with me here, and they are from the California Department of Insurance Investigations Division, Chief Kim Johnson Woods, and Program Suit Supervisor, Minerva Lopez. Thank you both, and welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you. And today, we're gonna talk about life and annuity fraud. Briefly, Kim, can you tell me what do you do? Okay, thank you, Nicole. Um, both Minerva and I work for the California Department of Insurance under the leadership of Commissioner Dave Jones. I am the Chief of the Investigation Division and I'm responsible for the statewide operation of this division. The Investigation Division consists of more than 100 investigators and support staff in seven regions throughout the state of California. Our primary focus is investigating suspected fraud perpetrated against our consumers by insurance agents or brokers, or those purported to be agents or brokers. We investigate all lines of insurance, which includes, but is not limited to, life and annuity, auto, homeowners, bail, and title. The primary crimes that we encounter involve premium theft, forgery, identity theft, and financial elder abuse. Most of our complaints come from California consumers, the insurance industry, and law enforcement agencies. Our discussion today will focus on insurance fraud pertaining to life and annuities. The economic loss experience for life and annuity cases we investigated in 2016 was in excess of $68 million, and that was an actual exposure Wow, that's a lot of money, yes, $68 it, million. Dollars? Yes, it is, an exposure. Wow. Uh, but before we get too involved in this discussion, I want to let you know that our department licenses over 400,000 insurance producers. Those that we are going to describe here are a very small portion of our total licensee population. The vast majority of our agents and brokers do comply with our laws. Mm. Our cases are primarily prosecuted administratively and criminally. Administrative cases usually involve action against a license and are prosecuted by our in-house attorneys. Our criminal cases are prosecuted by the local city attorneys, district attorneys, the California Attorney General, and the United States Attorney General. Minerva Lopez is the program supervising investigator. She is responsible for the oversight of the Life and Annuity Consumer Protection Program, which is a grant program that provides special funding to both the local uh, district attorneys statewide, as well as the Department of Insurance. She's also responsible for special projects and overseeing sensitive investigations that span throughout the state. Okay, well, Minerva, sounds like you have a lot on your plate and if you can tell us first of all when we're talking about life and annuity what is that okay well uh, first of all I would like to thank you Nicole for the invitation uh, to present this uh, wonderful topic of insurance and very interesting topic um, so purchase, purchasing the right insurance uh, product you know it's, it could be complicated it could be a challenging process but um, it could also be one of the most important decisions uh, in ongoing purchases to make you, uh, your family secure and, pro and protect them from financial hardship. So stay tuned uh, because if you're thinking about buying or canceling a policy, an insurance policy, an annuity, or replacing one that you have, we all have different situations as we get older or different events in our lives when you get married, you have kids. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about those uh, circumstances and that impacts your, your, the power of pur your purchasing power, uh, we're gonna go over uh, how you can check on your agent and, and your, the insurance companies and such. 
Um, you asked me to briefly describe the what is life in annuity, right? Sure. Um, the basic two life policies, uh, life products, are term and the cash value, the whole life insurance policies. Uh, so usually term, uh, the, depending as, as to if it is appropriate for you, it does not have a cash value, but it could be for a term of five, 10, or 20 years. Um, the cash value is, it combines cash, cash value and the death benefit. So then we, the annuities tend to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, and the, the main difference that I wanna relate to the viewers is that and the differences, annuities could be uh, collected while you're alive. And then with life insurance, you're talking about your death benefits. Even though life, annu life policies could also be sold, but that's a, different, that's a different topic. But annuity, to describe an annuity, is a contract between you and an insurance company. You buy the annuity by making one or more premium payments to the insurance company and and they make the, the income payments to you. Uh, the two most common annuities are the immediate annuities or the deferred annuities. And this is where we can, uh, the suitability of the deferred annuities for people that are older or may not have uh, the solvency uh, to tie up all their funds in a deferred annuity, that's where we come into some problems. Um, what types of fraud, you ask me, do we see? So, you know, I cannot, we don't have enough time to talk about a lot of the ones that we've seen, but I, I'll go up over a few. We see misrepresentations on, on these products because there's so many variations of life products like annuities and, and life insurance products. Mm -hmm. um, you see how sometimes an agent can go to either a senior or another person and, and say, look, I have this uh, annuity that is, uh, is perfect for you. And since they're complicated contracts, uh, some people say, well, you know what, I'm not interested, but then they keep putting pressure on them and some people fall for it, just simply like that for the, 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 you know, the pressure tactics. Then some other agents may go into a senior's home and say, you know what, um, I know you have an annuity, I saw you one, but um, I know you have equity in your home. Why don't you do a reverse mortgage? And, I'll go, and we'll go ahead and, and, and get you an annuity. Mm -hmm. So you're basically you know, uh, freezing some cash, some, some, an asset. Taking equity taking out of the home. Taking equity out of mm -hmm. a home and freezing it back again. And there are you know, commissions, fees, and everything. So you're actually losing money. So uh, are they selling this annuity as an investment tool to the consumer? Yes. That the, the consumer is going to essentially make money like this is an investment, like if you were going to invest in a portfolio, like if you were going to buy stocks. Correct. Or if you were going to buy a bond or if you were going to buy a, mut a mutual fund. Is that, how, is that how they're uh, selling this? Yes. And since annuities are used to supplement your income either mm. for retirement if you, uh, you want an immediate annuity and you're older, but you have a lump sum amount that you give an insurance company and you want to annuitize it, you want the payments immediately, then you can start collecting right away. It's a conservative immediate annuity. But if you start talking about variable deferred annuities that don't you know, mature until 10 or 20 years and you're already 90 years old, and that's all your it. money you have, that's where we have right. problems. Like science is great, but it's not likely gonna be that great, right? Correct. So if you're 90 and you're buying one of those, the odds of you getting that 15 years from now, not very high, right? Yes. Okay. Unless you're, you know, you're a sophisticated person that has attorneys and uh, your wealth you know, mm -hmm. allows you to do that because you may want to have that, those annuities may have some clauses in there for, you know, for college, for your grandkids, but you have the solvency to be able to mm -hmm. live off of, you know, other, other income. Are there disclosure rules? Uh, that these brokers have to follow when they are selling these instruments to uh, people, particularly to uh, senior citizens? Yes. 
Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. We even we also have uh, something that we call the Senior Insurance Bill of Rights, mm -hmm. and their applications have become more extensive for disclosures as the years gone by too. And uh, we're going to get to that okay. a little bit later. Okay? And can you just briefly t tell me a couple other forms of fraud? So we we have the mis the misrepresentation of of what they're selling. We have the rolling your uh, home equity into into the entire instrument. Um, what about rolling um, other parts of your uh, income or your pension or anything else? That that happens too. We've seen it where some people have you roll over their IRAs into an annuity. Mm -hmm. uh, we see churning where you uh, the agent has sold already an annuity and goes into the same people over and over again and keeps saying, look, this is this, I have a better annuity and it comes with a bonus. But, and again, also with misrepresentation and churning, they say, look, mm -hmm. the, the bonus is immediate. You're not gonna lose, the sur there is a surrender for the cancellation, there's a surrender fee that is substantial and then they, uh, so we've seen cases where they keep on churning and selling and replacing these products and people's money keeps shrinking and shrinking. So that we call that churning. Mm -hmm. So that's another one. And what about selling somebody an insurance policy where you, they told them that they sold them the policy, they took the check and they had the senior citizen write the check out in the agent's name and then lo and behold, they don't really have a policy. Have you have you seen that uh, kind of fraud? That was my next one on my. Okay, I, you, you're exactly right on. We have we called. Um, there's one. Um, we call it scheme, but there's uh, another way that the agents can befriend their clients and typically, uh, you know, seniors, we call them crimes of affinity. Mm -hmm. they, they, they've known them for years, they've sold them some products, you know, legitimately, and then they socially, you know, they, they take them out to dinner, and in some cases we've even seen where, you know, male agents, you know, uh, take them out a little bit more, like on trips, and then the clients believe they have a relationship. And so we've seen those too. So, and then slowly before you know it, uh, they don't check to see if the money is being invested. They really trust their agent and, and that happens. Wow. They, they, they write checks to them thinking they trust them blindly. Okay, invest for me or this is going for my annuity. And when they, when they find out or they wanna cash out something for an emergency, they, there's no money in the insurance company. Wow. And Kim, do you have a, a case that you can give us as an example? Um, I do. Um, I, if we have time, we will be discussing two cases. But the first case that I'd like to uh, discuss is involves a former insurance agent who gained the trust of two female senior citizens. Mm. Um, one of the senior citizens was 93 and the other one was 74. And he acted as their financial planner. He again gained their trust and said he could invest their money. Um, with respect to the 93-year-old, our investigator found evidence that this agent got her to reinvest her entire retirement portfolio with him. Wow. Starting in 2007, he sold her over $1 million in long-term annuities. And then over the course of seven years, he began rewriting these annuities and churning them over and over and oh over goodness. again in order to obtain commission, mm -hmm. but he identified it under the guise to her that she would be getting better returns um, than her prior uh, policies. Um, this particular agent earned almost $300,000 in commission on, on her on, on her and caused her to lose more than $500,000 in surrender values. And what happens in these cases is when you do life and annuity, um, when they write life and annuity uh, policies, the agent only gets a commission when they first write it. So there's no renewal. They don't get a second year commission or a third year commission, unlike auto. So the only way they would get additional commissions on this type of product is by rewriting the whole thing. And that's what typically can happen. Um, one of the other things he did with this particular victim is that he 
he received checks from her that were pre-signed and he told her that he would be using them to do investments for her but instead he wrote checks um, in excess of eight hundred thousand dollars and the checks were made payable to him or to cash and the way it was um, discovered was because a very um, alert employee at the bank noticed that these large sums of checks were coming through her account but they were being made payable to this agent mm -hmm. or they were being made payable to cash and so he, th when we did our review we found out that um, the money was never remitted to any insurance company and that he used the expenses for personal uh, for personal gain which included entertainment um, travel and gambling. He even bought a beachfront home oh, in, nice. in, in Santa Barbara. <laughs> How love, I would love dime. to have a home in Santa Barbara, <laughs> wouldn't you? Oh my yes, goodness. That was, that was really horrible. <laughs> wow. Uh, but anyway, during the course of this investigation, um, the investigator discovered a second victim who was 74 years old, and she lost $80,000 in surrender uh, penalties, in lost premium, and in interest. Mm -hmm and she suffered additional tax liabilities um, as a result of this. So in total, these two victims lost over $2 million due to the agent's wow. criminal activity. We were fortunate enough to be able to get back about $650,000 for the, for the mm -hmm. victims, but that's a little bit over a fourth of what they lost. This case was prosecuted by the Santa Barbara District Attorney's Office, and the agent was sentenced to 10 years in prison for his crimes. So that was really a good outcome. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've seen cases too where you've had victims that are so devastated that they've lost everything that they have, especially seniors, you know, yes. I mean, where they can yes. lose their home. Yes. They've yes. lost everything that they worked for, their retirement, their pensions. I mean, I can't imagine getting to the end of your career and the end of, you know, your your senior years where you're supposed to be enjoying the rest of your life and you're finally in your home and your retirement and, and you know, you're supposed to be fishing and you know enjoying the great outdoors and whatever it is you want to do and all of a sudden you know some agent comes by and just does a, a scheme on like like that and just takes everything yeah and it's very devastating to those seniors and sure. it's heartbreaking for us to even you know when we're interviewing them and we could we could feel their pain and mm -hmm. it's just as devastating yeah and did you have a case as well that you can briefly tell us about? Yes, I'll, I'll be really brief, but you said something right now that, that is, I can't keep it to myself. Uh, the first case that I worked for the Department of Insurance, uh, the, it, the agent was sentenced to 30 years. Wow. Uh, and it's exactly for what you just said. The victims were so devastated, they lost everything, and we're talking about $25 million and some of them did not even want to get out of their, their bedrooms. They were in depression. Uh, two of them died uh, because they had pre-existing conditions, but they were so weak. And so when we lined them up in court, for, for they, yeah. they actually were the ones that made the difference because the offer on the table after the prelim was 15 years by the judge. But it's an interesting story, but that's another case. But quickly, I'll tell you about this case. This, this case, uh, uh, that is more recent. Uh, it's a licensed agent um, who lost his license because of these crimes. Uh, he decided that you know selling legitimate life policies and annuities was no longer as profitable as just pocketing the premiums, right? So, but he was doing a legitimate business and he was licensed, For, and he had a good book of business and. People did not notice that um, he was a gambler. So he did prey on the seniors. So he def one senior lost $300,000 straight out, and many of them uh, were seniors. However, he also went into a company and pitched. Um, he did a sales pitch to them so, they, so the 15 employees could save money for their retirement. And he took approximately a million dollars from them. And those funds came from their bonuses, hard earned bonuses from the employees. Uh, so I'll tell you quickly about three of them. This is how the crime was, was uncovered. Uh, one 51 year old female wanted to cash out, like within a few years, wanted to cash out her annuity because she wanted to buy a home. Hello? She couldn't find her money. 
that's how she kept trying and trying and that's when she realized they trusted this man and they never checked to see if the funds were remitted to the insurance company. A 62 year old man who worked there for a long time, it is like, okay, now it's time, I need, is, this annuity should be mature, I'm not gonna pay surrender fees, I need this money for my kids' college, the money's gone. Oh, yeah. uh, 67 year old man, uh, all of a sudden, he had an annuity and a, 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 a disability insurance, he goes, he's disabled now, he can't work. Not the disability and no annuity. All those funds were gone. So just to summarize it, we, uh, uh, two point, two million, $250,000 were lost. And, and this agent was sentenced to seven years in state prison just this last November. And that was by working off a, a company of employees. In different... And yeah. individuals correct right so it just shows that anyone can be a victim and it's not just senior citizens I mean you have to watch out no, no matter who you are right correct so and that brings me to um, another group of people that um, I care very passionately about and I'm sure our viewers do as well have you seen life and annuity uh, fraudsters tar target our uh, veterans yes in fact just recently, uh, my boss uh, and I worked on requesting uh, approval from our commissioner to work in collaboration with the Institute on Aging from San Francisco. They have a federal grant. And there is uh, a veteran's pension that is uh, for very low income uh, veterans and their beneficiaries. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they're connecting the you know, it's a crime of opportunity, I guess. They're connecting the dots and, and some of our agents, um, they go and, and pitch this, uh, this sale of annuity and sometimes they don't even tell them. They just go to veterans' homes and tell them, look, you may qualify for this pension and, and then they tie up their assets. Uh, mm -hmm. They either put them in an annuity or, and, or both and they irrevocable trusts just so they can qualify for these pensions. So, uh, which we, they may or may not qualify for, right? Most likely they won't qualify. Okay. If there's money to be hidden, most likely they won't qualify. So there's tax uh, liability consequences. Right. They have to give the money back if they qualify. So we are working together uh, with the Institute on Aging and uh, this is something very important to the commissioner and to us as well. And they're also approaching, I heard, the uh, widows as well of uh, veterans yes. with the same scam? Yes. Okay. So some good advice is check with the VA. Yes. Check with your financial advisor. Be really careful before you tie up those uh, assets. That's correct. And we do have now with this coalition with Institute on Aging and the Veterans Administration and some other groups, we do have it on our website, mm -hmm. uh, on the Great. senior portal, please. There is a, uh, an advisory, it's easy to follow and you should be able to find information there. Okay. And we have a Great. website as a group uh, with, uh, the veter uh, with the Institute on Aging. We, there, the link for that website is there in our, on our Fantastic. Department of Insurance website. And Kim, can you tell us um, what are some red flags that we can watch out for so that we don't become victims of life and annuity uh, fraud? And can you give us some tips okay, on right. how to protect ourselves? You know, what do I do if I have uh, an insurance agent come and, and talk to me and they're trying to sell me policy, trying to sell me an annuity, and I just want to make sure that everything's on the up and up and that this is legit and that I'm not going to fall into any of these horrible cases that you guys are talking about. Because like you said, most of our agents are, are legitimate, they're good business people, they're following the rules, so we have to watch out for that percentage, that small, that small percentage that can do us a lot of harm. Exactly, and um, I have a few uh, red flags that I'd like to share with you and the viewers. Um, the first one is unsolicited visits from an agent. Um, by law, the agent is required to give a 24-hour notice when they want to go out and talk to, uh, to senior citizens. And if you have an agent that just knocks on your door and wants to come in, make sure that you um, put up your guards because 
generally they're doing that because they want to catch you by yourself, whereas you know there's no one there to give you information or to provide input or to, to help with your decision making. They want you to make the decision because they probably feel that you would make the decision that to buy the policy. Right. So um, that's one red flag. Um, the second one is high pressure sales tactics. Uh, if an agent comes in and they're too aggressive and you just feel like you are somehow being pressured, you know, you don't have to go forward with the transaction. And one of the one of the things that we've learned in the past is that, you know, we've had it before where uh, a sales agent has gone into someone's home and um, they're applying such pressure and the person feels like they, they, they can't get the agent out of their home, you know, and so they end up actually purchasing the policy just to get the sales agent to leave, which is not in their best interest. Um, another uh, red flag is um, request for cash payments. There's no reason to be given a life agent a cash payment. Um, what happens sometimes is we'll have an agent, in one particular case we had, the agent told the consumer, if you give me cash, then I will, um, I'll give you a discount on your premium. And guess what happens? That money gets pocketed into the agent's sure. pocket. It never gets to the insurance company. And you can't prove it. And you can't prove right. it. Right. And that brings me down to an another is blank checks. Sure. Sometimes they ask for blank checks. Um, they'll say, well, you know, we need to use your check to give to the insurance company who can then start your automatic monthly, you know, deduction through your bank account. You don't have to do that. Um, oftentimes, there's either a separate sheet of, uh, a separate form that they can complete, um, but you do not have to give a blank check, and I would not give a blank check. Um, also, there are times when, when, when you haven't received your policy yet, and you talk to the agent, and the agent is telling you, well, you know, the company's just, you know, a little bit behind, just give me a couple of weeks, give me a couple of months, and, you know, sometimes people don't follow up, and they never receive a policy. Well, if you, yeah. if you pay for a policy, you will always get a policy right, if you pay for call insurance. call them up, right? Exactly. Okay. Now, tips on how to protect yourself. One of the things we always recommend to our consumers is to contact our department um, and you can determine the licensing status, and you can also determine if there's any disciplinary action against an agent. All that is available on our website, and our website is www.insurance.ca.gov. Don't ever let an agent rush you into a transaction. Take your time. You are not obligated to make that purchase. So, you know, we, we, we need to make sure that we do it in our time frame and not in that agent's time frame. Don't sign any documents without reading them first. If you don't understand the language, don't sign. If they can't explain it to you to your satisfaction, don't sign. Um, don't allow the agent to fill in the blanks later. There are times when an agent will provide you, you know, will complete your application, but not complete every question, and then have you sign and date it. Mm -hmm. Well. When you sign and date it and the insurance company receives it, they're assuming all the information is accurate. However, what typically happens is the agent will go back to their office and they will put information in those blank spots that allow you to qualify for that product when in fact had the, had the actual information been put into those, into those blank areas, you probably would not have qualified. That's great. And unfortunately, we're running out of time. So I do know that you did mention that we have a senior bill of rights, and is that on your website as well? Um, yes, it is. It is on our website as well, okay. and we have we actually brought a copy. So um, wonderful. Uh, so so the informing can see seniors, that. yeah, Correct. it's really important. They know that that does exist. You do have rights. You have cons you have consumer rights as well. Um, and we brought with us as well um, who to contact if you believe that you've been a victim of life and annuity fraud. There is, of course, your, aid, your agency number, which is um, with us here today, as well as the Marin County District Attorney's Office if it is in our jurisdiction. Um, and I do want to thank you both very much for uh, coming with us and joining the uh, sounding board. You provided some great information. Thanks to the, uh, the Sroptonist crew and Novato.